Well, after a number of years in business, I finally got my first really negative and fake Google review, which I had to deal with recently. And I wanted to share some information on this episode about what I always advise clients when they call me with this issue and what I indeed did to resolve the issue on my own. After nearly five years in business, I finally got my first really negative Google review uh, that was obviously fake and unrelated to anything that we did in terms of servicing clients. Um, nevertheless, I had to deal with it. And um, I basically followed all of the things that I would normally tell my clients. So over the years, I've gotten a number of calls um, monthly, yearly um, from potential clients and customers who want to know how to deal and how to remove um, a negative Google review that they think is fake. Um, many of us in business obviously don't mind feedback. Um, we accept that uh, things don't always go right and we make amends and we don't mind customers honestly reviewing our businesses or I hope that's the way most business owners look at it. That's certainly the way I look at my business. Um, but when something comes out of the blue and um, it's not really related to anything specific that um, you had dealt with, uh, I personally in this experience didn't have any um, any clients where anything went sideways or, or had any complaints, um, probably in over a year and a half or so, they've been very few and far between. We've been lucky. We've actually built a reputation for uh, giving excellent customer service. Um, so when I was in Costco on Sunday and I got this email um, saying that I had received a new Google review, um, I was curious. So I had, um, I'd logged, logged in and opened the email and I read the review and it was, it was really personal. Um, the, the review used my name. They attacked me as being unskilled and unqualified to charge the rates that we charge. Uh, they said, don't hire this company. Um, the owner will tell you about his personal problems rather than doing the work, which I never do. Um, and it was really interesting. So they, they obviously had a lot of feelings attached, um, to this. So it was obviously somebody who had a vendetta against me or so I felt, but, um, from a more factual analysis, um, there are three hallmarks really of a, of, of a negative fake Google review. And that's that, um, the person doesn't use a real name. So in this example, it was just the initials SS. Um, there was no profile picture and there was only one review and that was my negative Google review. So those are the three hallmarks of, um, somebody who just incorporates an account for the purposes of uh, slandering your reputation and trying to harm your business. So I knew what I was dealing with immediately. Um, and so the question is, how do you deal with it and what do you do? Well, first of all, um, somebody personally attacking you can evoke emotions in a business owner. I've certainly dealt with that in the most of the phone calls that I've received over the years. Um, personally, in this matter, I knew it was fake. So uh, whether or not I could remove it wasn't really an issue for me. It's... Um, I, I know what our reputation is and it, it didn't really bother me that somebody was making these outrageous allegations against me. Um, but I, if, if I was given a preference, I obviously wanted to remove it. So I, I took the steps to try and have it removed. Um, so how do you do that? Well, it's actually very easy. Unfortunately, it's up to Google. Um, but the process for us to flag and report a um, suspected fake review is very simple. You just go to the review itself and you should see three dots um, to the right hand, upper right hand corner of the uh, review. Uh, and if you click on that, you can report the review. And Google provides you with a few choices um, of why you're flagging the review, why you're re reporting the review. Um, Generally, the one that's appropriate for most people in this context will be a conflict of interest because a lot of times it's obviously our, our competitors who are perhaps doing this um, or somebody, somebody who we've personally wronged, um, but nothing related to the business. So it's obviously a conflict of interest. There are a few other categories, but that's generally the one that will suffice. Um, and unfortunately, you don't actually get to make a, any arguments. You don't get to leave any comments. It's just up to Google employees to review um, the suspected fake review and issue a decision, which they do fairly rapidly within a day or so, I would say on average. Um, and my experience is that they do um, diligently review the case on a case by case basis, because of course, 
Um, customers are allowed to share their experience, positive and negative, with the public. That's the whole point of having a legitimate review board. So um, Google has to look at it very carefully, and that's within all of our best interest. Um, but again, in the context of having these three hallmark characteristics of a fake profile um, posting a fake negative review, uh, I, I, my experience dealing with helping clients through this and now dealing with my own experience is that Google's actually quite fair in dealing with these issues. So um, I would say within 24 hours or certainly 36 hours, uh, the, the matter was adjudicated in my favor and they removed the review. Uh, but of interesting note, I, I came across in doing my research um, lately in, in this particular matter at hand, I came across an interesting study done by M MIT um, some years ago, and many of you may be familiar with it, but it sort of, they looked at the practices of people who write deceptive reviews, and they found some interesting characteristics. Um, one is which they tend to be lengthy. Um, the details tend to be unrelated to a product or a service and tend to describe um, sort of inconvenience or feelings related to one's family. Um, and oftentimes, uh, deceptive reviews use a number of exclamation points um, following a sentence um, and, and in multiple sentences. And I found this really interesting because in my experience, this person who was making these accusations against me on, a, on the tail end of a couple of sentences used at least five or six exclamation points to really drive their point home. Um, but of course, this really just shows that they are personally and emotionally invested in just harming you in some way. They don't actually have a legitimate complaint. Uh, but I found the MIT study quite revealing and very interesting. Um, I'm going to put some details, probably the link to the Google support notification. Uh, in